Okay, so the law of phase harmony is based on non-commutative uh, quantum non-locality from frequency and this is explained by Fields Metal math professor Alon Khan in his talk Music of Shapes and so the truth of music is the non-commutative uh, quantum sphere that has a geometric dimension of zero. So I will be reviewing how this is connected to uh, quantum biology as a alchemy, alchemical meditation training. So here we have the secret source of Yoda from Star Wars. Um, George Lucas, there should be R there, he went to Shaolin and he met uh, Qigong master Hai Dong, who you can see here doing a full lotus or a one finger handstand. And so this is the real Yoda, the real source of Yoda. And of course, this is demonstrating anti-gravity uh, for him to be able to hold up his body with just one finger. Now, in uh, traditional Chinese music tuning, the perfect fifth is yang. And in alchemy, it's called the single perfect yang. So as you uh, build up the yang shen, you increase the frequency of the light, but also you convert the undertone in from the future as a quantum um, beat and this is due to the non-commutativity as non-locality so even though these are both the perfect fifth the overtone is three halves as C to G and the undertone is two thirds as F to C well, the C would be the one as uh, the fundamental tone. And as Alon Khan explains, the uh, point in space time is actually derived from a chord as a two note frequency as a correlation of two uh, frequencies. So in fact, this would be just this um, overlapping of the future and the past uh, with no geometric distance as just a uh, non-locality based on the speed of light. So this would be a superluminal um, non-locality from the frequency, the negative frequency and the positive frequency overlapping. And uh, Roger Penrose relies on this um, 
non-commutativity of negative and positive frequency to explain the uh, Hawking radiation that then exists um, before the Big Bang from a, a uh, negative entropy as a non-locality that's also uh, gravitational potential or anti-gravity. So when this was converted into the Western scale, there, this was the secret origin of commutative geometry. And they had to use an X for the fundamental tone so that the subharmonic as the two thirds is actually what creates the perfect fourth as four thirds, which would be the C to F in the same scale. But the problem is, is that the four thirds is never a natural overtone of the C. So that's why you have to have this X. So just a simple um, diatonic seven note scale is actually already assuming an irrational magnitude of commutative geometry. And this originated from uh, Philolaeus. So what he did was he actually used um, two fundamental tones by flipping his musical instrument around the lyre and the um, the four thirds was then created from zero to eight as the root tonic for a six to eight um, ratio of four thirds. And then the three halves was created from eight to 12, from a zero to 12, um, fundamental tone. So then by um, covering up the flipping of the lyre with the two different fundamental tones, then you have a the very first logarithmic equation of the perfect fourth plus the perfect fifth as um, four thirds plus three halves from this eight, eight, six plus uh, 12 eights. But in fact, it is a derived from two different uh, root tonics or fundamental tones. So you have, you're actually changing the, the scale by hiding the non-commutativity and that's how Philolaeus created the very first uh, commutative geometry from music theory. And so the actual truth of music theory, as Alain Kahn explains, is this geometric dimension of zero with an infinite uh, spiral of perfect fifths. Um, going in both directions as an undertone and under an overtone at the same time. And this is from a, an early uh, quantum physicist, Sir James Jeans, in his book, Science and Music. And as he explains, the true clock face extends to infinity in both directions and all simplicity has disappeared. So from this very simple intuitive notion, as Alain Kahn explains, you have an infinity of infinite dimensions um, as a single perfect yang in uh, Taoism. And so the, as Alain Kahn explains, then the the transposition 
of the scale of the range of the scale is from the three as a ratio, but it's non-commutative. So you have uh, you have uh, three halves as the perfect fifth interval, or else it's two thirds as the undertone. So then this is showing both directions as overtone and undertone, and the octaves no longer line up. And so you have uh, 3 to the 12th uh, approximates 2 to the 19th, which is actually from um, 3 halves to the 12th, and then by assuming the logarithm you add, it would be 2 to the 7th, but then you add it as 2 to the 19th. And so when you, um, since it's 3 halves, it has to be divided back into the same scale. So then you get 2 to the 1 12th, approximating 3 to the uh, 1 19th. And the reason why um, it's 2 to the 7 um, for the octave is, is that um, the 3 halves, uh, the, the seventh note is the perfect fifth in the chromatic scale. So that's the basis of the the connection between the seven octaves that are then divided back into the 12 note scale. So that's the, that means that it has a geometric dimension of zero that's more dense than the real number continuum of space time. And it's equivalent to the quantum non commutative sphere as a uh, non commutative torus. So here we have the non commutative torus. And so you have this overlap between the um, 12 note scale and the chromatic notes is actually existing in this fifth dimension. And this is the equivalent of one half spin. So with one half spin, it takes 720 degrees to get back to your starting point um, in order to observe the matter, the foundation of matter. And so the truth of matter is actually made of light from the photon that then has this negative and positive frequency. And this is what makes up the electron is the one half spin is actually due to this non-locality as an instantaneous action at a distance in the fifth dimension. And that's what this overlap means is you cannot see the uh, fifth dimension. So this is again the non-commutative torus that Alain Kahn relies on. So at each zero point in space-time you have this quantum block sphere of the negative and positive frequency overlapping for the one-half spin. So there's a twist in the torus that you can't see and that's what that's what this is explaining this. There's this twist of the fifth dimension. And this is the same um, donut design non-commutative torus that my uh, quantum physics professor Herbert J. Bernstein used for his um, quantum super dense teleportation satellite system that he designed for NASA for their um, so because it's it entangles the photon both with the polarization and also the orbital angular momentum as the, the helicity of the light um, 
so you can think of like like uh, the if you flip the torus, it's not um, symmetric. Whereas if you flip a sphere, it is symmetric. So that's why the not the torus. When you flip it, you're on the inside or the outside, and that's what is um, describing this non-commutative dynamic that you don't get with just the sphere. Um, so then when you have that 12 note scale, it's then applied to the body as meditation. And I have a book about this called The Ancient Advanced Acoustic Alchemy. And this is an example from the Veena in India. And there, there, it was inspired by the the 24 uh, cartilage in the spine, and which approximates the um, the hours of the day. Um, so you have the the 12, then the 12 notes along the body and the mind that are found in uh, Kriya Yoga as alchemy are based on the two hour two hour cycle. And you find that same practice in China in Taoist alchemy. It's called the microcosmic orbit or small universe meditation. And that's what my, um, it's also found in uh, Pythagorean training as the circulation of light that uh, Gurdjieff discusses. So this is the foundation of the practice is that you visualize light and you synchronize it with your breathing. And um, the Chun Yulin, he sells his uh, Spring Forest Chugong uh, Small Universe Meditation. It's all based on this secret. And there's also a, a book called um, Taoist Yoga Alchemy and Immortality. And it's all based on this uh, 12 notes as the body mind transformation using spirits that then resonates this non-commutative, non-locality. And so we find um, also in China, they have the same um, use of the vertebra to mean the musical instrument. Um, and that the Chinese character for happiness also means music, uh, just by changing the pronunciation of the Mandarin word. And so here you have the, once again, you have the non-commutative torus as a 720 degree spin with the flip. So if you think at every zero point in space time, this is actually practiced in the, this is the secret of the alchemy training where the whole body and the mind relies on the 12 meridians or energy channels that in India are called prana. Um, so you have the uh, five types of electricity linked to the seven chakras and then aligned with the 12 energy channels. So in this case, the outside of the hand is yang, the inside is yin, and then the upper body is yang and the lower body is yin. So you're aligning the in um, with the yang and the hand, the yin of the lower body, and the yin of the hand with the yang in the upper body. And this was discovered by Eddie Oceans when he worked at um, Stanford Linear Accelerator Center. As a quantum physicist, he coined the phrase quantum psychology. And he called it self-referential motion as the secret of the Tao. And he also taught Wing Chun. And he said the whole secret of internal martial arts as Nei Gong is due to non-commutativity. And he worked with uh, math professor um, Lou Kaufman. And then Eddie Oceans referred to the Bernstein-Suskind-Aronoff effect, which was named after my quantum physics professor, Herbert J. Bernstein, who um, 
did the Bell inequality experiments demonstrating the non-locality of the neutron due to the one-half spin um, based on the same you know, 720 degree Dirac dance. So here we have um, Nobel physicist Roger Penrose giving his talk on the non-commutative um, uh, precognition as a quantum superposition that then retroactively collapses to a matter as a mat with mass as a particle. So this is just another example of he relies on the non-commutativity of positive and negative frequency and he says this is going on in our minds all, all the time and if we resonate with it we can experience uh, precognitive visions this is what Roger Penrose talks about you can see he's right here giving his talk so that's from his YouTube talk on the science of consciousness uh, YouTube channel so here this is from um, math professor Lou Kaufman who made this video and he was collaborating with Eddie Oceans who's no longer alive but um, Lou Kaufman is still alive and I've corresponded with him and so here you have this this is actually a dancer from she's doing the Bali a Bali um, wine dance but this is what I learned in my first year my quantum physics class that I took from Herbert J. Bernstein. So you can see the wine glass never spills, stays upright. And this this proved um, Einstein wrong. Okay, so here we have the quantum biology. So you have this the whole point of the non-commutativity is it exists before space-time. So it's in pre-space. So you have this um, eternal process. Oops, I skipped ahead too. Here, let me let me do this one first. So, when you rely on meditation as quantum biology, you're relying on this secret of um, listening instead of visual perception, and the whole key secret again is that the when we line the Fourier analysis of visual perception it's assuming a linear operator of time and frequency and so you can see here the amplitude and the time when they get phase shifted there's a significant change in the amplitude but when we listen to it we hear he hear no difference because they're both the perfect fifth as the undertone or the overtone that got changed based on the phase shift but we our ears don't hear the difference because our ears are able to hear uh, up to 10 times faster than four year uncertainty so I call this the I was calling it the Hempel effect as a joke, but it's actually, it was a long debate between um, Hemholtz and Koenig. And even now they try to dismiss it as just like a recording, um, what do you call it? Just a after effect from a recording signal but um this again like if you in the traditional indian music tuning if you have a drone with the perfect fourth being a higher note it they 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 understand that that actually creates a new uh, fundamental tonic that's below the root the original root tonic so it's a perfect fifth below and this is like this is called the phantom tonic by a prominent um, music Western music theorist because 
since the four thirds as a as a a pitch pitch ratio can never be a natural overtone of the fundamental tonic because in order to be a natural overtone it has to maintain the same fundamental tone in the denominator so when you have three and the denominator is four thirds then you're you're not there's it's not possible for it to be a, an actual natural overtone and that's why it's derived from the non-commutative undertone of the perfect fifth and so you have this et eternal process of energy creation that's actually faster it's faster than the conversion of time and frequency that has to occur when you have a phase shift of amplitude and time in the Fourier analysis. So this shows that meditation is actually the highest uh, technology of any technology because you're able to bypass the time frequency uncertainty and resonate directly with the future and the past uh, through the frequency of the negative frequency as an undertone. So again, this is going on um, through the non-commutative non-locality and um, so this is, shows the proto, what um, Roger Penrose calls proto-consciousness from um, Bernard de Espinet, Espinet who is another quantum physicist and essentially you have this active information that's guiding matter from the future because once again all matter is actually made of um, light but it has the light has gravitational mass um, because it it inherently has this relativistic um, asymmetric time shift that uh, Louis de Broglie discovered as the law of phase harmony. So when you, in order to claim that the light has a zero rest mass, you have to assume that you can contain the light in a box and then average the center of mass as a symmetrical rest frame. But because the light is measured by the, the momentum that's directly proportional to the quantum frequency. Therefore, the frequency um, is inherently asymmetric. And this originates again from the music theory because as Louis de Broglie realized the, as a particle goes towards the speed of light, then the time also gets bigger as the frequency gets bigger. And so logically, since Frequency, frequency is inverse to time so if you have an octave of a frequency of two to one then the the time is one half um, as a wavelength so if the time is getting bigger that logically that means there has to be a negative frequency with the time reverse signal from the future and that's what this um, the phase velocity is when you multiply the wavelength of the particle with the frequency of the particle internal the internal quantum frequency is uh, um, you get this phase velocity that's superluminal um, it's the speed of light squared divided by the um, the frequency or it might be the De Broglie wavelength, and then that so that the De Broglie wavelength is the is the momentum, uh, the Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the the wavelength, and so or the momentum, and so this is the origin of quantum physics. And because our biologically we are made of biophotons, all the matter 
is actually made of photons. And so when we meditate, we turn the light around and we're self-resonating the photons. And therefore, we get this relativistic quantum dynamic. And that's been proven through the microtubules that, that the microtubules have a negative refractive index with the tubulin. And so you get a um, super radiance as a superluminal phonon a signal as uh, Dr. Aniriban Bandiopahe has now demonstrated. And so then with the weak measurement experiments, they've proven that this non-commutative non-locality is actually a gravitational force that's a repulsive force. And so once again, you have this in the double slit experiment, the trajectory of the particle as the quantum potential is being guided from the future by this um, frequent negative frequency before it is squared into a energy measurement. And so you have a gravi gravitational force that's a repulsive force due to this negative value. And it's one of the most interesting um, aspects of the weak measurement because it implies the gravitational repulsion rather than attraction. So that proves anti-gravity at the foundation of reality from the negative entropy. So um, Chinese philosophy professor Patrick Edwin Morin slipped this uh, point into Wikipedia because he started out in physics at Stanford and he points out that Planck was when he when Planck converted to joules the joules has the unit of seconds and so then he was able to cancel out the seconds in the um, quantum frequency that's measured as um, uh, the reduction of as a uh, h-bar so the Planck's constant is then reduced to h-bar by assuming a symmetric um, cycle cycle of time as a spatial measurement and so um, Basil J. Hiley points out that it's only when you square Planck's constant are you able to then reveal this non-commutative time and frequency that's hidden within Planck's constant because otherwise it got canceled out when Planck converted to joules for the h-bar, uh, the reduced form of uh, Planck's constant. And that's why Richard Feynman missed this secret, as did um, Paul Dirac. It's only in the non-commutativity that you get the truth of reality, as um, Bals J. Halley's figured out, along with Alon Kahn and Roger Penrose. So Penrose is relying on the De Broglie-Einstein relation which is actually this law of phase harmony and again it's not taught in um, physics courses as um, John G. Williamson points out um, and so essentially you have this um, superluminal time reverse signal it's a correlation that's active information that's a new quality of energy and it's gravitationally repulsive. So if this rocket is a particle or the matter, it's being guided um, from the future by this wave going the opposite direction as the phase velocity that's superluminal. And that's also um, negative entropy and anti-gravity. 
and so this also proves that there's no symmetric rest frame in as relativity uh, claims because light has um, an, in, an internal oscillation due to the gravitational mass of light whereas in relativity they they assume that light has no internal oscillation and the internal oscillation of light is therefore this formless awareness as a proto-consciousness or active information um, and that's what um, as astrophysicist Paul S. Wesson also relied on Louis de Broglie's law of phase harmony to explain the fifth dimension that the universe is actually a fifth dimensional black hole as a wormhole that also explains uh, spiritual phenomenon, all types of spiritual phenomena. So that's that's what's um, achieved through the quantum biology training, but it also explains why um, the ecological crisis has been occurring and accelerating as biological annihilation of life on Earth. Um, because as Roger Penrose points out, since mass originates as frequency, um, therefore the gravitational entropy is it it's um, the opposite of the entropy of matter and so time is highly asymmetric and coherent at the origin of reality in the fifth dimension and so the this is the true origin of life from negative entropy as the negative frequency that's non-commutative and non-local as anti-gravity information that's precognitive. And so Roger Penrose discusses how at the end of the universe all the the matter goes into the black holes as a black hole singularity that then has Hawking radiation that then becomes the source of the next Big Bang as negative entropy from pure uh, frequency, from the negative frequency. And uh, Gerard de Hoof says this is the secret of all matter as the et eternal black hole. Uh, so it's going on all the time in the fifth dimension as Paul S. Wesson also explained. So that's that's why we have the ecological crisis accelerating today, but we can also access this secret truth of the of life as the secret truth of the universe. That's also anti-gravity through uh, quantum biology. So I will leave it at that and exit the slide screen.